this guy, he's lying to you. He doesn't mean to. He's just being a silly little guy. Aww. But we're gonna use the brain to beat the brain. Oh no, my only weakness, me. He's gonna be talking about goals or something, who knows? This is one of the sneakiest ones and the one you're least likely to have heard people talk about before. You know when you're on the way to the salad shop, huh? you're walking down the street, you walk by someone and they happen to be wearing the same cologne or perfume as your ex, and all of a sudden, you walk past the salad shop, you get yourself a tasty little hamburger. Oh, now, obviously, we have an emotional reaction. We feel bad, we wanna resolve it. But what is actually happening? I'm gonna tell you, you see? You have a conscious goal with your silly little guy right here, that is to be healthy and eat well because it's meaningful and part of a goal that you clearly want. But in a moment of tension, upsetness, anxiety, feeling vulnerable, your goal changes. That new goal, self-preservation. I need to feel safe, I need to feel happy. Therefore, your emotional brain starts working, it goes into habits, it does your soothing exercises, which is eating poorly. That sucks. Instead, a little bit of mindfulness, slowing down the breath, paying attention, noticing that your goal shifted from healthy eating to self-protection preservation. And by stopping and noticing, you pass the ball back from the triggered emotional brain back to your smart person brain. And that smart person brain can choose between one habit and another. Now you can eat that salad. He thinks he's so clever with this one. This next one, you're gonna be an expert at already. You're gonna have seen it everywhere. But what if you hadn't? What if I say something totally out of left field? You'd either assume I'm stupid and don't know what other people know, or you'd feel dumb for not knowing it. This is cognitive dissonance. When your brain can't handle two contradicting perspectives, I'm smart and I know what this video is talking about, and then he just said something that I don't know what he's talking about. Either he's dumb or I'm dumb and I can't handle being dumb, so he's probably dumb and I'm gonna click off this video, but don't yet. It's when your brain can't handle that kind of conflict. You can solve this one the same way as the last one. Just be mindful, take a step back, realize it doesn't actually matter if I'm a jerk or if you're dumb. And if you need to pick one, assume I'm the jerk. I'll bear that burden for you. Oh boy, here we go, it's getting political. Now look, I voted for Joe Biden. Ah, just kidding. Why would I ever vote for Sleepy Joe Trump 2024, baby? But I'm Canadian. You just got bamboozled. You weird, buddy. But I'm sure if you care about politics, you went on a little emotional roller coaster there. Oh, he voted for Biden. I'm not gonna listen to anything he says. Oh, wait, he secretly believes in Trump. Everything is valid again. This is a cognitive bias now. We like those who are like us. We don't like those who aren't like us. What can you do about it? Stop it. Get some help. Now at this point, you've seen that this silly little guy can get you in a lot of goofy trouble, but sometimes it's more serious. My man can straight up gaslight you. Like, uh, remember that embarrassing thing you did last week? How did I know? I'm always watching. Well, you didn't just recall it, you recreated it. Now, if my political ambiguity got you into a bit of a pickle, you might be more upset by remembering this embarrassing thing and feel worse off for it. If you thought it was a goofy, silly little thing, you might think that your memory of your embarrassing thing is a silly, goofy little thing, because when we recreate that memory, we're also recreating it with our current mood. That's why you can get into an argument with somebody and recall things that they've done that were totally innocuous before, and now they seem very malicious. And our brain is a jerk. The only solution here, don't make big decisions when you're super emotionally charged. There's gonna be a time and a place to do it, but generally, chill out first. Five, 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 five. You eating right now? You one of those people who can't eat without YouTube? Me too. See where I like, so you have to like and support me and subscribe. You see, some habits are cool and quirky, but some of them suck. And this silly little guy, anytime he gets upset or under tension or stress, you slip back into that emotional brain and your old habits kick in. And I can't go into all of habit science in this however long video I'm doing, but here's a couple hot tips fresh out of the oven. <laughs> Taking a couple minutes to focus on your breath, journaling and writing down the mood you're in that you are having difficulty facing. These are both activities that can flip the switch back from emotional brain 
to smart person brain and in your smart person brain you can choose between one habit or another that is one of the main things that your smart person brain is good for making choices on which habits to do based off your goals pair of scissors you know what this silly little guy's favorite pastime is? It's also, presumably, the thing that allowed us to kill all the other Neanderthals and all that, because I'm an archeologist now, anthropologist. Uh-oh. Our ability to tell stories. And we do this all the gosh darn time. Oh my God, he didn't text me back. He fucking hates me. Uh, he thinks I'm the stupidest fucking person in the world. Uh. Did you see that look from my boss? I he definitely hates me. I'm definitely gonna get fired. Oh my god. So here's your one-step guide to making it all better. Let's pick a different story, you know? But then what if my first story was more correct? Pick a better story until you have a chance to validate the other one. And if you never validate the other one, at least you have a much better story that makes you feel much better. Here's the thing, even if your story that makes you feel better is a lie, if it's something that calms your brain down, doesn't put you in tension, allows you to be mindful and be paying attention, you'll be making much better choices anyways. So if somebody actually does hate you, you'll be able to deal with it much better when you're not under tension. Those weren't so bad, right? You've probably heard a lot of those. You have your own strategies. You've dealt with them. But what about when they come all at once? Like you tell stories how you're real crap at job interviews and they make you anxious. So what happens? You form an association with how crappy job interviews are. When you go to approach one, your habits kick in that try to protect you and make you tense and defensive. And you go into the interview and now your emotional brain's in full swing. So all that cool smart person knowledge you have, that's not gonna come up in the interview because you're too tense and too deeply embedded in your defensiveness. So I'm gonna give you two little strategies to overcome this forever. First is the beginner's mind. This is a Buddhist concept that means approaching a situation as if you've never done it before. I've done this a lot in the past. If there was someone I had beef with, that probably was unfounded. I just pretended this was the first time I'm meeting them, clean slate, and that calmed my brain down because instead of anticipating all the ways that they suck, it allowed me to have a little bit more of a blank canvas. And the second is one of my favorite ideas from Psycho-Cybernetics. There was a story in the book of a guy who was absolutely mortified in giving public speeches. And there was one idea that changed everything. Before he went on stage, he thought he was gonna go have dinner with his mother and father, which for him was a non-stressful activity. So don't pick that one if it is for you. By having both a blank slate and an expectation for an activity to be relaxing, you prevent that jumping from smart person brain to emotional brain and have your full cognitive abilities to make choices and pick habits and be aware of things in your environment and notice if you're talking too much or not enough or other people's emotions and interpretations. You'll be able to notice all of those things much better if you're not in here and you're in here. <laughs> Michael Jordan. There's a bonus one, bonus tip. Um, you know how I talked about politics and I didn't give you an answer? That's called the, uh, uh, hold on here. Um, it's called uh, uh, the Zaynark effect. That means uh, open loops and unanswered questions stick more in your brain than answered ones. So I don't know, in that interview, uh, make your final question. Can you imagine how amazing your team is gonna be if you hire me? And it's just going to drill in their brain so hard, they'll never know what hit them. Until next time, I'm Alex, and this was me using my silly little guy to fight my silly little guy. Stop it. <laughs>